Hi everyone, welcome to this week's EKG. We have a good case for you this week. I'm looking forward to uh, talking through it with you. We have an 88 year old female who has a history of high blood pressure and some thyroid issues. She says she feels very weak, feels very dizzy, and she fell today. She says her ribs hurt now since she fell. You get a set of vital signs and you notice that her heart rate is 40. She's fairly bradycardic, but she has a normal blood pressure. Her sats are a little low on room air, around 91. Breathing 20 times a minute, sugar looks okay. And you know that you always get 12 leads on elderly patients with vague complaints, especially elderly females, right? When they're weak and dizzy. Here's what we get. And good old Rescue 16, they got a really good 12 lead here. Uh, give you a second to take a look and see what you think. Uh, and I, just for the record on this one, I disagree with the computer here that the arm leads are reversed. We're not, that's not the teaching point for this 12 lead, so we won't get into it, but I think they did just fine on their placement. And then let's take a look and see what we find. So the rate, computer says that the rate is 40. I look at it broadly, it does look bradycardic to me. Let's uh, march it out and see what we think. This QRS kind of lines up with a thick red line, so we'll count it out. 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 40, like maybe even a little less than 40, but it's very slow, profoundly slow. So I'm worried, but her blood pressure and her mentation is hanging in there, so we have some more time to take a closer look at this. Next, we move on to our rhythm. Is it regular or irregular? And I say just by looking at this, it looks very regular. Um, and then we ask ourselves, what about P waves? Is there a P wave before we QRS? Here's a P wave, here's a QRS, here's a QRS, there's a P wave before it. Uh, QRS, there's a P wave before it. I see a P wave before this QRS. I see a P wave here, um, P wave here, and probably right here. And in general, that PR interval to the naked eye looks like it's about the same. So that does look like it's a sinus rhythm, but let's take a closer look at those P waves. Do you see any other waves in here that don't seem like they fit? And this is a very important teaching point, is when you have a bradycardic patient, you really want to scrutinize your 12 lead and look for potential blocks. And what that means is look for extra P waves that aren't conducted. And so I have a, a mentor uh, or a teacher that I like to listen to, Amal Matu, he calls this electrocardiographic polyuria, <laughs> too much P. Uh, and I see extra P waves in here. That's what's happening here. So think about this in your bradycardic patients. Take a closer look and see if you see extra waves in there that are not where they should be and don't make a lot of sense. And as you look closer, you start to see these extra waves all throughout the 12 lead. And they're at pretty regular intervals, right? And if you march these out with the P waves that you know are there, they're very regular, right? Okay, and so we have non-conducted P waves. So, and it's actually at a rate of two to one. This one gets conducted, this one, no QRS. This one gets conducted, this one has no QRS. This one is conducted, this one has no QRS. And so every other P wave gets through, generates a ventricular beat, but every other P wave is just ignored. Okay, so we do have uh, AV block here. Next, we move on to our axis. We're looking at leads one and leads AVF. In lead one, we're down. Lead AVF, we're up, so down and one, up in AVF. That gives us right axis deviation. We move to our intervals. We're looking at our QRS. It's 106, it's less than 120, which is important because that tells us that this beat is generating from above the ventricles, it's narrow. Okay, and then our QTC is 450, so on the verge of being technically defined as a long QT, which we would totally expect in a bradycardic patient, right? Where it gets dangerous is when it's close to 500, but we do have a long QT here. And then we look at our ST segments. So let's look at 2-3 AVF at our inferior leads. Any ST elevations or depressions or T-wave inversions? No. How about 1 in AVL? Same thing. Looks good. Septal leads, I do see an inverted T wave there, which is probably okay. Um, otherwise, no ST elevations or depressions that are really sticking out to me, so I would call those normal. So what we do have here 
is the second degree AV block with two to one conduction. And if you remember, I always have a hard time remembering blocks. And so this uh, poem is really helpful for me. Hopefully you'll find it helpful too. I can't take credit for it. Um, learned it from one of my paramedic students who probably found it on the internet. But if the R is far from P, then you have a first degree. So we see our first degree block here. It's just a long PR interval, right? Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a winky block. And so what we see here is short, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, then it's dropped. And then we start over again. That's your winky block. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz 2. And technically, we wonder, well, maybe that second degree AV block type 2 could be the same thing, but it's a little bit different. Uh, it's really hard to tell when it's 2 to 1 conduction. But you see some P's that are just randomly dropped. This one didn't get through. And so that's a Mobitz type 2. And this could be a Mobitz type 2, but it's happening at such regular intervals. You can't really be sure. So it kind of gets its own category. Second degree AV block with 2 to 1 conduction is what we call our 12 lead here. And just another thing to review, if the P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. So these P waves march out very regularly. You have regular P waves, regular QRS's, but they really don't talk to each other. Varying PR intervals, wide QRS, very bradycardic patient. So the takeaway from this is, in general, your patients with blocks are going to be bradycardic. So every time you have bradycardic patient, take a minute, print a strip, look very closely, and see if you can find an AV block. Pay close attention to your bradycardic patients. Get a strip, look at all those P waves. Look for extra P waves. Sometimes they hide in the T waves. So if your T wave morphology looks like it's changing or it's different, ask yourself, could that be a hidden P wave in my bradycardic patient, okay? And then look at all the PR intervals that'll help tell you what kind of block you have. Here's another look at our 12 lead with our two to one conduction and our AV block. You see here every other P wave is conducted. Okay, and that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.